What's up, everybody? Welcome to the JHS Show. Um, today, we're going to be taking a look at the UAD AMP emulator series. I've got the Dream on my board here. We've got the, the Woodrow as well, and Addison has the Ruby. Whoop, whoop. These pedals are AMP emulators, and they're insane. They're absolutely insane. Um, I recently was working in my home studio, and my tubes blew, and I needed a quick fix. Addison said, you should just try the Dream. Take it home. Mess around with it. And I plugged it in, and it was effortless. It was such a fun experience to plug an em amp emulator in and have it do exactly what I needed it to, and I didn't I was not missing my amp. Um, I even went to track guitars for a song I'm working on and completely forgot this was even, I was running through this and uh, was absolutely just like yeah. so stoked with the results. Which, by the way, can I interrupt you? Yeah. Quick plug for Nick here. He dropped a single at midnight. It is released. It's called Hey Kid, and it hey, is awesome. Thanks. So and go, it's very good. It's so Thank good. You. Maybe we'll throw a link in the uh, in the description after this or something. Sure. But go check it out. Hey Kid. Anyways, back to we were in hey, the studio thanks, tracking. Man. You got it. Yeah. It's a great song. Go check it out. Thank you. Um, Yeah, so I was tracking through this, and I just like didn't miss my amp. And I think for those of you who have watched the show long enough, you know I'm not like a crazy picky gear person, but I am crazy picky about sounds and tones because I want stuff to sound nice. Um, I heard Addison, mm -hmm. you were using the Ruby and really loving it. Yep. Beck and um, I went to Nashville in June, and I had a chance to play all of them. Um, I can't remember when they came out. It was like not long after we were in Nashville, and I went to Vintage King, and a super cool dude named Kevin Shuck, who's there, um, he's like, hey, man. It's great to meet you. Do you want to play these pedals? I said, sure. And so I actually bought this from uh, Kevin in Nashville. So, Kevin, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Kevin. Um, and it has, before that, I was carrying, had my guitar on my back, had my pedal board, which is like a road case. And this is this is my board. We can do top down. It's like, it's not huge, but it's heavy in a road yeah, case. Yeah, right, right. And then I had the Ox Box, also by UAD. I had that in a backpack, and I'd put that on the front of me. And then I had my amp in the other hand. So I was like loaded down carrying stuff. Yeah. And then when I played this, I was quite blown away. Bought one, uh, went home. And since then, I haven't actually taken my amp out of the That's house. That's incredible. And I play, you know, relatively often, once or twice um, a week, sometimes. Yeah. Less so right now. But this is basically just goes in my, my gig bag now. So I have, um, you know, my guitar on my back, my pedal board in my hand, yeah. and my amp in the guitar case. That's crazy. Super awesome. So when we say, you probably saw the thumbnail and you were like, uh, what? That's just clickbait. It's, it's not. not. It's, it's true. true. These yeah. have actually replaced our two amps. Yeah. Um, which isn't to say that two amps no, don't no. have their place. There's a, a magic to two amps that we love, but um, these uh, are just incredible boxes, and I want to get yeah. into... Um, yeah, first of all, we both have our actual at home pedal boards. We wanted to, this is my pedal board. It's not as clean as Addison's. <laughs> Just flip back and forth. Look, nice and clean. This is mine. Addison actually put this one together. <laughs> I was going to say, I did do that. <laughs> I ripped it apart because I had a DL4 here and it was just a little noisy. So now there's like this big hole where I can put some other things. Um, but the, the dream is sitting here right now. So yeah. that's good. But yeah, we wanted to play the actual stuff we're using at home because uh, this is real life. This is a guitar I've been playing recently. It's a, uh, uh, by Boss Tosh. That's the Luma T. Mm. It's look. I don't Sounds even need really a top-down camera. I can just <laughs> kind of show you my pedal board within the guitar. I'm playing this at a show this weekend, um, and it's awesome. But this is like actually our rigs. Yeah. Um, are Are you playing your new single, Hey Kid? This I'm weekend gonna. At your yeah. Show? Okay. I am. Cool. 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 Yeah. New single with, out with the dream. <laughs> with the dream. Um, so yeah, let's get into this. But I want to like before we like dive into the sounds. I want to like talk a little bit about james santiago yeah the the basically like the project mastermind crazy man behind yep. this project so james santiago uh works for uad um uh he was approached uh by bill putnam mm -hmm. who is the son of the founder i believe that's correct yep. yes yep. and um at first he was like no you guys don't do guitar stuff 
Um, but he was approached again and they were like, Hey, like we're getting into guitar stuff. Like for real, for real. Um, this was seven ish years ago, I think. Yep. Yep. And, uh, he was like, okay, cool. Let's do it. And I just want to say if like (laughs) James is the guy you want designing your amp emulator. Cause the man is, uh, an obsessive creature. We had a phone call for, with him for about an hour yesterday and he talked through each pedal and um, just the lengths that they went into yeah. gathering and simulating data for this project. And it is unbelievable. Like stuff where I'm like, is that even necessary? Yeah. But it like kind of is. And it's one of those things where it feels like you have like buying these pedals is like having James Santiago on your team. Yeah. And it's like, that's a dude you want on your team. Yep. If when it comes to two bands, yeah. they like. He's so um, passionate about so stuff. So passionate. Yep. Um, and he they did like high speed video recordings of tube amp like speakers being cranked at, to the point of blowing up. So they would have this like high speed footage just to capture the like visual physics of speakers like blowing up. Yeah. And they would gather all this data and we can get into a little bit more. Um, we'll go through each one, but, uh, but big shout out to James Santiago and his team. Uh, each pedal had a, uh, specific, like, uh, like what was the, what was the school that all these guys went to? Um, Stanford. Stanford. Yep. They're all like brilliant Stanford, uh, like, um, algorithmic experts, like more geniuses. One of them that worked on the Woodrow, Dave Burner, um, He was the one, or Burners, um, sorry if I got that last name wrong, um, with the S there. He was the guy that was modeling the LA2 stuff with UA. So when James came on board, Dave was there, and he worked with Dave on the first one. The first one was the Woodrow that they they started with. But he was also, I I believe I have this right, he was a a PhD-level professor still teaching at Stanford and working for UA at the same time, doing all this stuff. And so, like, these dudes are brilliant yeah they are brilliant they are minds. more than qualified Absolutely. to be uh emulating these classic amps um another point i just think is so cool is that um if you've listened to josh talk about guitar history you've heard him mention that there's always two guys there's always two people um with every like really big event invention in guitar history whether that be the the maestro fuzz tone Um, whatever you name it there's always like two people there's the crazy guy um you know like mike matthews and bob myers like uh uh i got his name right right you got i just had like a like a brain panic like i i I, that would have been so like heretical it might be meyer yeah but yeah Um, bob meyer uh that's right (laughs) yeah um uh you know you have yeah mike matthews bob meyer and it's like you've got crazy mike who's got all these r- just brilliant so ideas. much passion so yeah. many ideas and then you got the guy that can execute those yep. ideas who's like equally brilliant yep. um but can actually like put legs to him so it's really cool each of these pedals has their own um uh algorithmic expert behind yeah. it who uh partnered with james to make sure that these uh, were up to snuff and yeah. just the amount of hours that James went into like a being these to to the real thing um is just incredible so let's like go through each mm-hmm. one yeah. and like we can kind of reveal more of the sure. craziness yeah. behind all of the uh like the engineering yeah um so let's start with the let's start with the ruby the ruby okay cool um why don't you yeah just talk about it for a second cool all right, so this is uh, an AC30 top boost amplifier from 1963. Um, James talked about, so he would he'd buy um, tons of different uh, like speakers and things like that. Um, but all of this started with the aux box, yeah, which is I think really important to mention first because um, that like same technology is in these these speaker cabinets, yeah that are you know in the pedal those are considered irs is that what well, that is i no i don't no? think so okay. i think their whole their whole thing is like dynamic speaker modeling it, is like it, a better way to say because okay, cool. an ir is just a single snapshot of something right, it's right, not like right. dynamically changing yeah. and so james said like 
I, there's like a quote that I wrote down here in the the very end. He said, um, maybe I didn't write it down. It doesn't matter. The idea was like, he's so obsessed with what he does in the detail. He he didn't want to miss. Like he didn't want to release something that um, wasn't that didn't actually feel like the right. real thing. That was yeah. like crazy important. So he was even telling us stories about like the last week of testing and he was a being all these amps he spent hours doing it but um i say all to say because the Oxbox started this whole thing for yeah. him and he said okay once we got that now we can move on to the amplifier right right part so um anyways okay that aside um this is the the ac30 so famous users brian may obviously mm-hmm. um the edge Radiohead. i mean so <sighs> many people have used ac30s um you've got I guess we'll just maybe walk through the pedal here. So um, there's a brilliant channel and a normal channel and a vibrato channel. Um, we just got done filming with Josh's gray yeah. panel, yeah. top boost modded AC30. So I wish we had that here. It'd be cool to show. But anyways, um, it has three channel options here. So just real quick, um, I'm on the silver uh, speaker cabinet here. And let me, I don't have anything else on. Okay. I'm also, for the sake of today's demonstration, running stereo. Um, Nick's running mono, but I thought it'd be really cool to show yeah. these and how they sound in stereo. So here's uh, here's just a clean tone on the Brilliant channel with the silver uh, speaker cabinet. <laughs> that sounds so good. It really does. It's broken up, and then I, I like to have them like, you know, I guess that's edge of breakup as you as you dig in. It's pretty pretty dirty. <laughs> Ask a, this yeah, was yeah, a yeah, question yeah. from the comments. Uh, someone was asking about edge of breakup. Um, mm, mm-hmm. If these units are able to get that like response, hundred percent. Yes. So the answer yeah. is yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We can even de- we can demo yeah. that m- even more. Yeah. Um, also, that is the ruby you were using. <laughs> it's correct. Yeah. The other day, uh, there's yes. been some some curiosity about what happened. To oh, the ruby. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so uh, this isn't the. This is my personal ruby. This is the ruby that we used the other day. I just underpowered it. Nothing exploded, so it actually still works. But the reason I I had mine on here, and we'll we'll talk about it, um, is because mine's connected to my phone, which is the app, and you can do cool stuff on the app. And I couldn't connect this one, or else it would get rid of all my settings on there, or something like that. So I just swapped them out. But I was underpowering it. They need four hundred milliamps. So if you buy one, power it. Oh, they need five. Yeah, it's five. I don't know. I think I read it it's four hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So just I've make been sure. I'm saying five for some reason. That's okay. Make sure you give it enough juice. But it's yeah. okay. It survived. We didn't. We didn't burn the house down here. So, um, thankfully, that's that's some clarity on that one. The, um, the ruby's yeah. fine. The ruby's okay. Don't worry. The ruby's fine. Whew, I was pretty stressed. I'm not gonna lie. Burnt up a four hundred dollar pedal, but I didn't. Thank goodness. Um, okay, so here's here's a cleaner tone. Um, I'll just roll the the volume back a little bit. So that's like not that's pretty clean. That's not really breaking up at all. If you just roll the knob up a little bit, here it is breaking up. Yeah, that's so sick. And then let me roll my volume knob back and you can hear how well it cleans up. That's so cool. So that's like super dynamic and yeah. amazing like i just for the sake of testing let me crank the gain yeah and that was that was something james was like insistent on yeah. like i i think i don't know how to emphasize this enough like even um you can see his like adamant like yeah. nature even in sort of like the initial rejection of the job offer yeah of being like no 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 right I don't want to just, I want to do it like for real, yeah. like for real. Yep. And, and he I mean, did. They did. He really did. Yeah, yeah. Him and his team. And what was great is, you know, he would work with the team and they fully would build these, you know, these like, I don't, in my head, I have a, I don't know what it looks like in yeah. real life, yeah. but to, to the point where they would build out these amps, model them digitally to the point where you could swap out part, like yeah. parts Tolerance and, and bias. tolerances yep. and bias the, the amps in specific way, ways. And, you know, he would even tell the, the engineers like, yeah, it's saying it's biased correctly, yeah. but this isn't how the amp feels. Mm-hmm. 
Um, which I think is just huge yep. because I think, again, like I think the thing that probably scares people or maybe gives people hesitation is like mm-hmm. feel right. Like, yes. do these feel like amps yeah. now other than other than the fact that maybe you don't have like a speaker blasting behind you and you yeah. feel a physical like air wave yep. or whatever like the these are responsive yep. the way that amps are responsive it's so true um for for a lot of players too myself included i was taking my amp places only using it direct with a load box i haven't i've plugged my speaker in uh once or twice in my house mm-hmm. in the last six years. Yeah, yeah. But I've had an ox box for probably three or four because I was always running like a cabinet like in a back room or something and micing yeah. it up. Once I got the ox box, I haven't heard an amp through a speaker. Right. Like at a gig, like I have, you know, I've heard them here in the shop a bunch. But so for me as a player, I'm not really missing that air behind me anyways yeah. because all the stages I play are like, hey, it's a silent stage, right? Right, totally. Well, and like, you know, for me... It, uh, my context for playing guitar is mostly recording. Yes, and so which I'm is isolated, I'm nev- which is isolated. Yep. So I'm I'm just lis- waiting to hear <laughs> like a fu- finished product hit my yeah, head. yeah. Um, but but yeah. having said that though, um, there he they did not like EQ this for a final product, meaning they left all the low end that you get from an amp in these. That was one thing that he was really adamant about as well. Is like. A lot of times you'll get an emulation and it's like a lot of low end rolled off because mm-hmm. honestly we, we will roll a bunch of low end off when we yeah. track guitar. But like he wanted to give you the experience of the amp. So it's like you yeah. experience the full EQ sweep and it's let's, really cool. Yeah. Let's hear that because like this is how I have it set. And on Voxes, as you turn up the bass knob, it's rolling off bass. Same with the treble. As you turn it up, it's rolling. So they're backwards. But like here it is, full bass. Actually, let me turn up the gain a little bit here. So like that's a cool sound, but it's not necessarily one I'd go, I'm going to use that. Yeah, and with right, certain right. cabs in particular, I wonder what the blue is like. Yeah, that's that's too much low end for me. Yeah. You roll the, the bass knob up. Like, like now it's much better, more clarity. Right? In the top end. And so they, like you're saying, they, yeah. it, it's this is how the amp would behave if it was yeah. mic'd up with a 57 in totally. another room. Um, why don't you demonstrate how the, I mean, we're going to demonstrate how all of them take pedals. <laughs> yeah, but of that, again, yep. that was another thing. Yep. Like, it's, it's not just good enough to make a good sounding amp emulator. The right. amp has to be able to take pedals because that's the freaking like what's yep. what's the point right. you know what i mean yeah so um what we're saying is is that if you're not using pedals what are you doing with your life <laughs> actually there are a few people i know that don't use any pedals and i have mad respect for them but let's listen Same. to how this takes pedals yep. um and you've got some really cool stereo stuff set up here yeah for your, um this, josh isn't in today so we're we're gonna go stereo on he's al- right. allowed to yeah. that's i mean they sound like um but I, I believe so. Kevin told me this. He's the um, the our friend at, at Vintage King. He said that there's actually it's like two AC30s behaving differently, just subtly differently. It's not like you know a singular stereo path. I wish I would have asked James to like expand more on this idea. But there's a width that occurs um, that's really cool. So right now, um, if you're just listening on your phone, you're not going to hear this. But once I turn um, a reverb on, and then I'll use an El Capi stand as well. Um, you'll hear just this, like huge width. Um, before, so, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Before you start playing, um, can you talk about like where you pl- where you're placing that? Yeah. Um, and talk about how you're plugging it in. Which is just a couple questions about where you place it in the chain. Yeah. Um, are they running to front end uh, effects return XLR out that kind of thing? Yeah, you can do the four cable method with this, which is like you can insert your effects um, after the preamp section of the pedal. Nope, I'm sorry. Pause. Wait. Yes. Where's an effects loop live? It's between the preamp and power section. And power section comes at the end, I believe. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, I'm not either. But what I do know is that you can do the four cable method here. So you can you basically can have an effects loop. For me, I'm using this literally like um an amp. So I'm just running my whole pedal board into it and then I'm setting it like I would set um my I have a match list that's very voxy, so I'm setting it just like that. 
um, and I'm running it DI out stereo. So there's two channels and they're panned hard left and hard right. Um, so does that answer the question? You could put it, if you wanted to, you could put it before your wet effects. Um, I think that's what's cool about these. You can do all kinds of different stuff that you couldn't actually do with a normal amp. So if you wanted cleaner effects, I guess, um, where you know your your amp is coming before all those things, cleaner delays, cleaner reverbs, things like that, um, you could certainly do that on your pedal board. So for me, I'd put it, if I was doing that, I'd put it after the vibrato, and then it would come you know, the rest of the wet effects. But um, I, I like hearing all of my effects hit the front end of the amp, even um, like as the amp's starting to break up, things compress, um, things can get a little out of control with reverb, like in a cool way or delay. Um, so that's how I'm using it. You're also using it at the very yeah. end of your chain. So these yeah. are replacing. We're just using them amps. as amps. Yep. Um, and like, James, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, and and I I feel like t to me that like makes the most sense. Yeah. Um, especially with these kinds of amps, they're they're kind of like these classic staple models, you right? Know? But yep. yeah, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say James said his goal was like if you showed up to a gig and you had this as a backup and your yeah. thing, your amp went down or something. Yeah. He's like, you could pull this out and it would it would just replace yeah, the spot totally. of your amp, which is usually at the end of your chain. Yeah. So that's how I'm using it. That's a great question. Um, so here it is with a few pedals. Um, here's just the <coughs> clean tone, edge of breakup. Oh, it's already got reverb on. Do you guys hear how big that is? Yeah, it's so huge. You should put some headphones on. And yeah, you can you put them on, on. Yeah, you can come do back it. later and do it. But So dry tone, but then listen how big this gets. And then if I turn the El Capi stand on too, it gets even even bigger. So cool. And then the big test. How's it take overdrive pedals? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's some uh, brown carbon, which is like a, a blues breaker style pedal. <laughs> It's, it's great. Clean tone. Brown. I'm going to turn the gain up just a little bit. Push the, the amp a little harder. And then the other thing, too, is like um, it really can take a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to turn like a big sound on. I'll turn... Um, the brown carbon on, I'll turn, I have a Cornerstone Gladio, the single channel version here. I'll turn those on so it's like quite a bit more gain. I'll do a lot of reverb and um, some delay here on the El Capi stand. Let me just do a quarter note thing. And you can see how well it takes effects and like how well it holds up. <laughs> my volume knob back so all of this on you can hear how well these things clean up it, yeah. it has the that classic speaker like yeah. thing like that you can you know what <laughs> the, I mean the, the crunchy like, crinkly yeah like the little like yeah where stuff kind of like it you know with all this gain and all these effects and stuff it things kind of start going like, oh, oh, oh no, yeah. oh, like something's, you know, little explodey feeling. Yeah. So um, I don't know. What else can I show here? Maybe a couple other cabinets? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so that was the silver speaker. This is the blue, uh, which I think is just a 112 um, Celestian blue. Let's turn the effects off so you can just hear, um, hear the cabinet change. So more low end, it's a little brighter to me. The silver is like a more mid-rangey kind of woodier thing. Oh, it's so good. Um, and then here's the green back. So a lot less top end. And then when you buy these, uh, you download the app, which we can talk through the app yeah, here yeah. in a little bit. Um, 
you download the app, you register the pedal, they give you three extra oh, that's um, so cool. cabinets here. So I don't know what <laughs> this one is. I do know, I'm gonna go to the middle one here. We'll just show that. Um, this is like a matchless cab that they modeled. Which I love that one. That's it really sounds cool. so, so good. And right, right now you're using a preset that you've made. Yep. So you can actually store um, like presets and have like yeah. kind of a go-to thing. There's also tons of stuff within the app that you right. can customize yep. these two. Not, you can like dedicate these two switches <laughs> to be for reverbs. I think for this one specifically, mm -hmm. it's reverb and tremolo, right? You can, yeah. you can do whatever you want. That's really cool. Oh, so wow. yeah, so like if I click on, it'll connect here. Um, can you plug headphones into them? That no. no. Um, so I've heard that some, uh, depending on the impedance of the headphones, you can get a stereo Y cable to like a single summing, and you can plug your headphones in. So the it it's powerful enough to drive <laughs> some stuff, but um, it doesn't have a headphone amp built in. Um, hold on. We don't Let's see if I can get three connections. We usually like stop at apps on this show, but we're gonna go Man, for it. We're gonna go for it. It'll connect here. Just take a second. One thing I that I'm noticing the in the comments is yeah. that a lot of people are actually already using emulators mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that, um, which I don't know why that surprises <laughs> me. Um, I think because I've read so many other comments and emails from yeah. other spaces where people, um, I mean, you know, they love their tube amps and right, they don't, right. they, yeah. they don't want to give those up, which, yeah, totally. you know, that's fine. Someone said there's nothing like standing in front of a moving speaker, which like I get that. Yeah, right. totally. That is its own experience that yep. you will never get right. with these. But a lot of people are already on this train yeah. and, yeah. and loving it. So that's just speaking to where technology <clears throat> is with this whole business, Yeah, which it's just neat. Yeah, it it's, really I is. think I think it's better now than it ever has been and it's more accessible now yep. and you also think about like you know 10 years ago or whatever it's it's hard to if you're in a house you know you you live in a house you have neighbors yeah. yep you have absolutely thin walls yep. you can't crank a speaker nope. and get it to do the things yes. that these can do because it's like to get some of the breakup that yes. you get with these it's like you gotta turn it up yep. really loud yep. and so there's that element of like yeah like this is way more conducive to like everyday life situations but yeah. it's not just like a gimmick like play guitar in your bedroom and it, yeah. everything it's like no like you're playing an amp yep. like it's it's legit so do you have the i do app yep. pulled up? yeah yeah um so here's here's this app here if you get in uh you go to the home page there's my pedals i can click on ruby oh my gosh did i just <laughs> it, our internet's also like it's... a little bit i don't know what's going on this isn't i promise this isn't the pedals thing it's i'll my, go through the my i'll go through the dream while you're yeah, 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 getting your it. setup do so it. i have the dream on my board this is like a 65 <laughs> um deluxe reverb uh one of the things i asked um uh, I asked uh, James like about each of these. Like, why did why did you pick these three specific amps? Um, and he was like, basically, like if you can't gig with, you know, a deluxe reverb, then it, the problem might be you. So I wanted to <laughs> like he like he wanted to make like the the go to amp for everybody. Um, and th I've been playing this a ton, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> Uh, this is the amp by itself. Um, this is like a preset that I have. Little bit of breakup. I'm like growing to love that amp breakup yeah. like more. But um, so this is a preset. But um, I also on this other switch here, I have like a way dirtier sound. Oh, wait, let me turn off the emperor. So that's just amp and then the the reverb unit. Um, Dude, that sounds so good. Yeah. And like that, what's so cool to me about that is like, and I actually just 
just figured out how to store my preset over he over here because I didn't want to lose my settings for the gig. But then I was like, wait a minute, I could just go. This is this is a whole song's yeah. worth of sound, yep. you know. Um, and then I have sort of a slightly little more, way more clean sound for like my pedals and stuff. Um, you know, I've been doing like like a morning glory high gain. Um, this has like a spring unit in it. Um, and it also has a trim. I have the true spring from Source Audio so that I've been messing with. That's for like the sensitive songs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just like really, really nice. Um, I've got my rat on here too. Like that just takes it so well. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Let me crank the distortion on the rat a little bit. Like it's just so good. Yeah. Throw a little slap back. Like it's just amazing, and like again, I'm I'm not coming. My perspective, Addison and I have like she kind of have these like different perspectives. Like Addison has probably owned more amps than I have owned or ever will own. You have that place in your brain that stores all of this knowledge about like. I mean, you were like calling out like what the speakers and everything yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. And and like I don't like I this this pedal is for everyone. Yeah, it really is. Absolutely. Like, you know, like I, I have experience playing electric guitar, yep. but like I, I don't have that like super techie gearhead background. Yes. Like I'm very much so like, I want to write music, I want to plug, plug in, and I want to go, and this lets me do that with like very little hassle, yep. and just being able to go, oh cool, here's like a really clean sound. Here's a super dirty sound. It's just so nice. Um, again, like there's there's uh there are speaker options for all of these. So let me I can mess around with these a little bit. Oops. There we go. So you can get you can get more on the cleaner end if you turn your um your volume down and then your output up higher. Um, and then the, the reverse is true if you turn your volume up and your output that's kind of how you get those clean versus dirty sounds um but this is on the the gb25 i don't know it's what, a greenback a greenback yeah it i i mean it's a greenback yeah, is, yeah. i totally knew that <laughs> um and then this is the oxford speaker setting let me actually and the oxford Go back. A lot more low end on the green back. Oxford. And this is the EB12. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just like all rock and roll. All music. All music. You just, know what's cool you know? about this, yeah. too? Is you just switched between three speaker cabinets. If yeah. you registered this pedal on your phone, yeah. you'd get three more. That's six speaker yeah. cabinets. So this is one amp with six speaker cabinets. If yeah. you just owned the real amp, yeah, right. You're, there's a lot you're missing out on. Right. That's a case, uh, again, for, for the pedals like these gear, any of them. It's like, man, having options for you in the studio, there's a oh, lot totally. here for you. No, this is such a great – like, that's such a great point is just being able to go – oop, drop my phone. Who cares? <laughs> um, like, being in a studio situation yeah. and being like, ah, don't like the low end on that. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. There's something thin and – Spanking crazy, and you just yeah. it's, it's just nuts. Yep. And then you have these mod sections as well. It's just like a lead. Let me actually go back to the green back. I think I kind of like that. For stock. That's the D ticks. So, there, the, James spoke about this. There was um, some modifications, like common. So like Tex would do these to 65 reverbs and yeah. he included them in this. So he had, you know, 
uh, deluxes that he modified, and that's what these are. They're representations of really common mod modifications to yeah. um, these particular amps. Well, and like that was one of the elements um, I'm practicing for my show, uh, tuning and talking <laughs> at the same time. Um, uh, one of the elements that he was like... <laughs> It's just the detail. Like, there's there's certain yeah. people who would have been like, ah, that's good enough. But he was like, no. This is an amp from 1965. The speakers I'm going to emulate are going to be era appropriate. Mm -hmm. And also, the mics that they used to capture the speakers were also era appropriate, which kind of totally blew my mind. Like, yeah. they would get SM57s from the correct era and mic up speakers from the correct era and like he's basically uh uh what's the word um like he's done all the obsessing for you he's curated like, everything that's the word i was looking yes. for yes <laughs> he's he's curated all of the like highlight it's like yeah. the highlights reel it's like you know it's like every three years like credence clearwater revival has a new best hits record it's like you know yeah Go listen to that. Right, the, he's like curated the best of the sounds this amp yeah. could have. Yep, and the fact that it's—I don't know why it makes me so excited that it's like era appropriate because yeah. it feels like one of those things that most people aren't gonna go. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely <laughs> an SM57 from '65. <laughs> but like, he was like, no, like nothing less than accuracy is you know what he's shooting for. Yes, and it really like. It really comes through, and I, I absolutely love this. Like, like I just can't. It takes. A, I don't know. I do, I feel like I I'm I'm at a loss for words. It's just got it all. Um, and it really these pedals, the more we we're talking, it's like he's captured like these events. Like yeah. it's like events. I'm gonna switch this out for the Woodrow. Cool, cool. Um, While you do that, let yeah. me talk about yeah, the go app. Through the, it, go through the app. <laughs> got it pulled up. That's here. why so I was. I was stalling for time. Right, right, I forgot yeah, I was stalling yeah. for time. Hey, that's all good, um, bro. Can you mute me oh, yes. for like a second? Yep. I don't want to. I don't want to hurt people's ears. Yep. Hold on, just a hot second. Stupid. All right, you're muted. Oh, good. Sweet. Okay. Um, so this is the app here. Uh, I've saved a bunch of different presets, and you literally just click. Let's see if we can get it to. Um, there we go. You see the light change there as I click through here. It's changing. How cool That's is that? That's so cool. And I've just named them with, you know, different names, whatever it is that I want to call it. But there's artist presets that they include as well. So Tim Pierce, what a guy. My goodness, he's incredible. David Ryan Harris, come on. Derek Wells, Jim James. Let's see, who else? Man, Justice West, KC native. Played with so many folks. Lincoln Brewster. I mean, you know, famous users of these amps. Um, modern people of these amps, um, modern users, I should say, um, they've created presets with these, and you can you can use them. Um, That's really fun. Factory stuff, uh, presets that they've included, and then if you go into settings, this is the cool part. I just want to show real quick. Um, so there's foot switch mode. You can assign, like for instance, the left foot switch. Do you want it to be the vibrato? You can assign it. If you want it to engage the boost, which is this knob right here, you can assign it to do that. Um, you can pick which uh, which foot switch does what. So for Nick, if he wanted to go to a gig with an overdrive pedal, a slapback delay, and this on a really tiny board, he could still have a reverb and tremolo. So you're saying I could rig. get my board even smaller. You could make your rig even smaller if you wanted to. That's kind to. of amazing. Yeah, so here's the fourth cable method I was talking about. You can turn that on and, oh, okay, no, nah, we don't want to do that. Let's not enable that because we don't want feedback. Um, you can save uh, backups and then... Um, you can reset your pedal here. So it's just a really intuitive, it's really straightforward. But for me, it's allowed me to like dial in a sound and go, oh, I really like that. But I still want to, I want to tinker with stuff. I'm going to mess with it. So I'll save it. Yeah. I'll name it. And then I'll like, I want to try that sound with a different cab. And then I can super quickly A, B between the two. Yeah, that's cool. Because I think there's something like if your, 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 um, ear memory is like three seconds long right yeah. so you can't really remember yeah. what you just heard but i can i can do it here that's I so can switch cool. within three seconds i love that so. they thought about that I it know. really it really like speaks to the amount of thought that they put into yeah. the the kind of users that they're yep. gonna have because you just yep. said like 
dude, I'm gonna I'm not like the app guy. Right. Like I'm gonna plug this in yep. and I'm just gonna use what's here because yep. that's me. Yep. Like I need that. But then it's like, you know, maybe in a couple months. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'll yeah. try this. But there are people who are like, I like the feeling, even yep. if they don't aren't always yep. tweaking in the app, yep. they 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 know that they can right. and it seems like pretty intuitive and easy to use, it's which is incredible. Super straightforward. Um, Again, I just feel like we're just kind of gushing over these yep. these pedals. It's sincere for the record. It really is. I actually bought this with my own money. So. Yeah. <laughs> I yep. just am <laughs> sort of stealing Josh's. That's okay. Um, uh, but you would go buy one with your own money if Josh said I no. I totally would. Absolutely. Joshua, did, did you have something? Yes. Uh, just a question from the chat. Are, we, are you processing in the box or is everything flat? Bro, everything's flat. I took everything off the channels today. So everything yep. you're hearing is just hitting uh, some preamps on our Apollo straight in. Yep. Nothing else going on. Um, and Bruno would really, really like for Addison for you to play just the Ruby and a distortion. Okay. Just a okay. Second. I'll grab a distortion pedal yeah. while you're talking through yeah. the Woodrow, maybe. Yeah. So the Woodrow um, is really cool. It's a 55 Tweed Deluxe. Um, this was one of my favorite stories that he told about this amp um, and the way that they built it. So they built all the limitations even into these amps, um, which I think is really cool because it, it, I, you know, it's like well, you can go into the app, you can make all these adjustments, sure. But there are there are some uh, some limitations to these really great tube amps, and, and it's what makes them great. So he was telling you know like a lot of studio mus musicians would bring these amps into the studio, no frills, no re uh, no like reverb tanks, no tremolo, no nothing. So instead of uh, like the Dream has the spring reverb, and you can access a tremolo on this as well. This just has a room, um, and. Uh, one of the th the reasons why um, he was like super inspired to put this room setting on is he was listening to uh, Jimi Hendrix recordings and uh, uh, Axe as Bold as Love and they were soloing the guitars and he soloed the guitar and it got really thin all of a sudden he was like what's going on and then they realized there was all this bleed from Jimmy's amp in the in the um, drum overheads. So a lot of Jimmy's tone was coming from the room, and so they want he wanted to capture um, that aspect of what was going on in studios during this time, and uh, get some of that room sound. Josh actually played this yet. Uh, what was that? Two days ago. Um, and when he turned the room up, I thought someone, you know, we're always bugging each other, like, hey, mute your mics, we're jamming. I thought someone left their mic on, and there was, like, somehow the guitar was bleeding into the mic, but it was just literally this room sound. Um, so I'll, I'll play this for you. And again, like, this is going to be a little bit more of a dirty amp. It's super cool. Back it up. So that's about as clean as you're gonna get it. <laughs> but that's so great. Yeah. Like it's so cool that you could that you have the the same limitations that the amp has in that way. You know, you're you're getting this amp. It's amazing. Yeah. So the room is probably one of the coolest the things that stuck out the me, to me the most. Um. So let me. I'm not gonna use pedals because they weren't using pedals. <laughs> Oh, that's not the room knob. Huh. Oh, this is the mic volume, too, which is insane. Um, here's the room. Like, that's bonkers to me. Um, let me do... So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a sound really quick. So uh, I believe these yeah. two controls, these are di representative of different inputs on the amp that you had. So there's a microphone input and okay, an instrument yeah. input, and you can use those on the pedal Together. to create. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to do kind of, let's see, I'm going to do volume up, master down. I'm going to dirty it up. Kind of like the Neil Young thing. Yeah. That is so cool. Um, let's give it a little bit. That's insane. So that's without the room. I'm going to turn the room up. Then I'm going to store it. I'm going to take this middle switch, hold it down. That guy blinks. 
now. Then I can go back over here and be like, eh, I want a cleaner thing, but it's not going to be that clean because that's what this amp is. Maybe I don't want reverb or whatever. And maybe I want like a different speaker cabinet. I'm like, oh, okay, this is my, my amp or my pedal platform. But then you're like, oh, I want to go back to this. Wow, that's a little bit. That was a lot. <laughs> I just think that's super cool. Yeah. I can turn off the delay. Like the room with delay too. Just really interesting. I just really like it. And like when we were talking about this, it's like I told him, like, you guys captured an event. Yeah. Like not just like circuitry, like yeah. and, and a, a, like a time travel experience. Yeah. Like this is what it sounds like when you record guitar on this amp in the same room as the drums and everything else. Yeah. You know, I think wow. that's super, super cool. And it just, there, there, there's that story aspect to gear that I think we all love so much and getting into all of these and like, there's history. It's like, there's a date. There's like a, there's this reference and it's like, you can access, Yeah. you know, and I, I still just can't get over the, the era appropriate speakers. Yeah. All of these speakers in here are appropriate to the time. The mics are appropriate to the time. It's just so much attention to detail. Yeah, and and I feel like w th this thought I just had was like the ability now for you and I to have access and yeah. anybody to have access to these particular amps. I'd say mm -hmm. of of like you know the the vintage AC thirties. They're three, four, five thousand dollars. Yeah, these are I mean really expensive in the thousands. You know, sixty five deluxe reverb maybe a little bit more affordable, but even then nowadays vintage fenders are getting so expensive. These are replicated so well that if somebody goes, man, I really want that experience, but well, I can't even afford yeah, even one totally. of them. You can buy three for less than the cost of like one single yeah, amp, which that, is amazing. Yeah, and like, really so cool. they're $399. Um, yeah. And which when I heard that, I was like, and after playing them, sure. I was kind of like, oh, that's awesome, yep. actually. Because yep. if you think about everything that you're getting, I'm being salesy, okay? I don't usually get too super salesy, but yeah. I just, I these are so worth collecting. Yep. Like, I could totally see having all three of these Absolutely. in a studio and being like, all right, what are we doing? We want to do yeah. something kind of beatles -y and whatever. Or like, yeah. you know, we want to do a Radiohead thing. Oh, throw the Ruby on. Mm -hmm. Like, we want to do some Americana, whatever. Yeah. Throw the Woodrow in there. Like, there, you can just, between these three units, you can do everything. Yep. And I wouldn't be surprised if they've got more stuff coming down the line. Oh, I, I sure mean, hope. the amount of time yeah. that goes into making these is absurd, but yep. like... You know, I think you said it. You said it the other day. Like, like th these pedals are so focused. Even their other line of pedals, it's just a very, very focused. Yeah. But also, extremely detailed. Yeah. Um, which is which is rare. Like, yeah. I feel like sometimes you either get like one or the other. Yeah. It's like super complicated and like yeah. really hard to wrap your head around. Yeah. Or it's like so simple and just only does one thing. Yep. Absolutely. This like really bridges the gap. Um, and I think it's gonna be very exciting for a lot of people I we so. have any questions um no i got I a distortion so. pedal oh you got your distortion I pedal did. cool midi midi uh -huh. midi there is a usb but i i'm not sure all the functions for that it's not i don't believe it's there's midi uh does it have do they have some kind of noise gate um no i don't think so no noise gate okay no yeah, I mean, as long as you power them well, which I learned the hard <laughs> way, I underpowered mine at home, and they, they get a little noisy if you're not powering them right. But, I mean, that's like the, the only disclaimer is just make sure that they get 400 milliamps, 9 volts, 400 milliamps, and they'll do what you need them to. Don't do what I did on the live the other yeah, day. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't be a silly, silly fella. All right, here it is with a distortion pedal because we had a request. Um, this is on the matchless cab. Here's the clean tone of the amp. That's not clean. Let's clean it up a little bit. Pause for effect. Anybody? Throw back. Oh, is that pedal the, musical? the musical? Yeah. And then, all right. Here's clean tone. Here it is with some distortion from the woodcutter from Big Ear.
Okay. That's awesome. There it is. So cool. Um, well, thank you guys for watching. This has been super fun. Um, I'm super stoked about these. Definitely, if you're looking for amp emulation, if you're looking to like for other options, this is fantastic. I, I really, really sincerely love these pedals. I think it's important to say we chose to do this episode earlier this week. Yeah. And it was because we were both really excited yeah, about them. Yeah, we like, were. These, we actually mean what we say, you know, yeah. when, when it's like, hey, we're really excited about these and we really yeah. actually think they're good because they have replaced in many ways. Like, I still have an amp. Nick still have, yeah. has an amp, but we're both actually gigging with these now. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So, huge shout out to James and yeah. his team. Um, uh, on the Woodrow, Dave Berner was the engineer, uh, the algorithm engineer. On the Dream, uh, Ross Dunkel was the engineer. And on the Ruby was Mark LaMonaco. Marco. 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 Yeah, Marco LaMonaco. Yeah. Um, I feel like these guys don't like, you know, the guys behind the computers and stuff don't usually get shout outs. Yeah. Like these dudes are brilliant. And James led led the charge on this project and made it like incredible. So yeah. James said, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Yeah. I work with amazing people and they let me uh, basically, I, what was his wording? They let him do the silly things yeah. that he loves to do. Yeah. And he's surrounded by great people at, at UA. So Yeah. It's amazing. So huge shout out to that team. Thanks for watching. If you like the episode, uh, hit like. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Because a lot of people watch the videos, but they're not subscribed yet. And you should. Uh, ring the bell icon to get notified. Notific Whoa. Uh -oh. You got it. You got uh -oh. it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I can't even find the words as hard. Hit the bell icon to be notified for all future episodes. Um, and that's it for us. Seriously, go check these out. Um, you need to you need to just try them. They're amazing. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. See ya.